Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Shoe Podcast. I am Shade. I'm Nina. And today we have a lovely lady that's going to tell her story. You know, a lot of times we get stuff that's more, you know, upbeat and funny and stuff, but this is really serious. And we ask you guys to have an open mind, um, no judgment or anything like that on this podcast. If you have any questions or anything you want to um, add to the comments, please. And you can reach out to Cam- Camila too and um, help this situation. I mean, we all can help as a, a as a family, as a tribe to help her get her child back. And she's going to tell her story. She can tell it better than us. And we're going to put you, bring you to the stage, young lady. Hi. <laughs> How you doing? I'm okay. How y'all doing? <laughs> We're fine. Yeah. Oh, so we want, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. We want you to um start from the beginning on um how this tragedy has entered your life and um you know just let us know how it started. Okay. Um, so I have a told I have four sons. Mm-hmm. I have a 18-year-old who during the time that the story starts, he was 17, um, a nine-year-old, an eight-year-old, and then I have my Yanni. My nine-year-old okay. is 10 at this time. And Mm so uh, basically my teenager was teenage and this is around December 17th. Okay. 2023. Okay. And my teenager is teenaging, you know, he's, he's, he's growing into his face. He's becoming a man. He don't want to listen. He's, he's doing what he want to do. He's in his rebellious phase. Right. So one night he decides that he's going to leave and he leaves at about 8 PM and he doesn't come back until 12 a.m. the next day, okay? okay? Now, prior to this, we had been going through the rigmarole. You know, this is not just like a one-time thing. It was back and forth. So, basically, I had told him, like, you're going to be going with your family in Kansas City. You know, I'm not going to be dealing with this. You're not going to be in my house causing dystrophy. And right. so, okay. as a result of this, when he comes home at uh, 12 a.m. that night, because we have been texting back and forth, and he's telling me what he's not going to do, et cetera, et cetera, he tried to stage his scenario and listening to his grandmother on his father's side, she basically tells him to call the police on me. So when he comes mm-hmm. back through the window, because honey, I had set his suitcases and everything outside because <laughs> it got to that point, you know, right. and I basically told him, you know, your bags is outside. You can go on about your business. So as a result of this, he calls the police, but he came in through the window. My middle son let him in through the window. We live in a two, we live on the second floor of an apartment. He didn't climb to the second floor and got my little, got my little son to open the window for him. And so mm. when he came in here, you know, I'm like, why are you in my house, etc. And he's like, oh, B, you know, shut up talking to me. You ain't running, you know, all of this. He puts his mm-hmm. hands on me. You know, I'm pushing him out the door. He puts his hands on me, but he had, he's like, I'm calling the police. You know what I'm saying? But he had already mm-hmm. called the police before he got there. So when he, when we had our altercation, he went ahead and um, I shut the door and locked him out. Five minutes later, here comes the police, right? Mm-hmm. I don't answer the door. Okay. I don't have, I have the right to remain silent. What are you here for? I don't want to do no business with y'all. I didn't call y'all talk to the person who called y'all. Right. Mm -hmm. He he still don't get in bottom line. Right. And so basically, uh, basically the next day, which is about December 18th around that time, it's a CPS agent at my door. So Mm -hmm. I look out the window and where, where, what city are you located in at the time? I'm in Houston, Texas, clear Lake Houston, Texas area. Okay. Okay. He's going back to um son is going oldest son is going back to Kansas City. Yes, ma'am. He's going somewhere. Okay. He's going somewhere because he's can't be up in my house. You're 17 years old. You're a grown okay. man. You're yeah. a grown man. And so that was my okay. sentiment. That was my sentiment with CPS was at the door. I'm like, you at my door about a 17 year old? Right. right. If he did something. If he did something out there with the law, y'all wouldn't be knocking on my door trying to get no. No way. For me, y'all gonna do whatever y'all want to do with that grown man. You feel what? Yeah. Right. Right. So I didn't answer the door because you have no merit to be here because in the state of Texas, endangerment or abandonment consists of a 15 year old. This boy 17. OK. okay. He he yeah. Was. So right. I don't answer the door. They leave a card. OK, whatever. I'm not I'm not paying you no attention because we don't have nothing to talk about. Right. So right. Two days later. Here come Philip Leach again, knocking at my door. So I'm like, okay, what are you here for? I don't answer the door again. So after this, I ends up uh, 
we, me and my sons, we leave it and we, we go somewhere and we mm -hmm. come back. This is about three days later. Mm -hmm. We we leave and then we come back and Philip Leach is sitting in my parking lot, stalking my apartment. Oh. Right. So, wow. so from there, uh, I ended up contacting the commissioner of Texas DFPS. Her name is Stephanie Muth, M U T H, okay. right? Okay. And because I am uh I consider what I call what, what people call themselves to be a sovereign. Okay. Sovereignty is your birthright. That's how we were born before they put us in any of these contracts, before they did any of this. Okay. Right. I've mm -hmm. done all the paperwork. My children are in trust. I've did all of that. I teach this. Okay. I have a mm -hmm. large following on TikTok. So I contact Stephanie Muth. I send her an affidavit telling her I'm not doing business with your fictitious privatized human trafficking corporation. Get your agents right. and tell them to stop coming to my private residence. They trespassing on my property. Mm -hmm. If you do not, you will be held criminally and civilly liable. Right? right. So I send this to her. And the next day, like, I mean, not the next day, but like around about December, probably 21st or so, or maybe mm -hmm. December 20, 25th or something. Not, not the 25th because that's Christmas, but all of this is streaming around December. Mm -hmm. After I send them and give them notice, here comes uh, a CPS supervisor investigator by the name of Jennifer uh, Jennifer Dominguez at my door. Mm -hmm. I know these names because they put the car. We never had any action interaction. But when Jennifer Dominguez comes to my door, my window was open. So we looking at each other. She sees oh, me wow. and I see her. We're I'm not talking to y'all. We don't have nothing to talk about. What are y'all here for? So in the midst of this, me and my boys end up going to Kansas City for vacation. Mm -hmm. And this is when Mayani gets sick. OK. Mm -hmm. And so in the mix of this, uh, you know, we ended up coming back to uh, coming back to Texas. So when Mayani got sick, what happened was he was Mayani has trisomy 21, which mm -hmm. is basically a variation of Down syndrome. OK. And OK. So, uh, you know, he he's a he's healthy. He's a healthy boy. Um, but nonetheless, he ended up getting sick at this time, you know, so he's having he's having tr trouble breathing because he's really rambunctious. He's really energetic and he's not being himself. So we're at the Airbnb and I contact the ambulance. OK. Mm -hmm. And when the ambulance come, they do a start, you know, they check them and they're like, oh, well, we think he's OK, but you can take him to the emergency room. I'm not OK with what y'all telling me. So off to the emergency room we go. So we go to the emergency room in Overland Park, Kansas. And so mm -hmm. they're they're basically like, oh, we need to suction him out. And um, they just have us sitting there for hours. And I'm just like, my son cannot breathe. I mean, you could tell that he's struggling because it's really tight. He's really compressed. He's really struggling, you know. Yeah. And I'm like, y'all don't see this? Like, what's the problem? So I mm -hmm. end up leaving me and my, I'm like, come on, boys, because I got my little ones with me as well. So I'm like, come on, we're 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 about to go to Texas. We're going to Texas where I can get, you know, I'm going to his primary care physician. They're not taking this serious, you know. So we drive 12 hours back to Houston, Texas. And you know, when you got kids with you, that mm -hmm. is about a 16 hours, 12 hours. But you know, I'm having to stop in between, change diapers, do all of this. But Mayani is not himself. And also during this time, my mom was watching him and he was having consistent diarrhea. She's like, you know. He's sick. Let's get him to the doctor. You know, he's having a lot of different. And how, how, how old is the other two boys? The uh, They're right now 10 and 8, but they were 9 and 8 at the time. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Bathroom breaks constantly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm hungry yeah. breaks. Stop fighting yeah. breaks. Come on. Yeah. Me pull over. Let me, y'all need to do this, you know. <laughs> but nonetheless, though, girl, we get back. I assume the same day that I get back to um, the state of Texas, Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, on January 5th, I go to his primary care physician who is at a uh, UT physicians in Clear Lake. And okay. they're like, oh no, we need to get him. He's having respiratory issues. Let's get him to the emergency room. So I take him to the UTMB emergency room in Clear Lake, which is right around the corner. So my boys, my boys, I leave them at the house. So I could just take him, you know, y'all go in there and go to sleep. You know, I go in the house. I mean, you know, I get take him. So I take him to UTMB. So UTMB declares, OK, he's having some respiratory issues. We see excessive fluid on his chest. We need to get the kangaroo care here. We want to get him sent to Texas Children. I'm like, OK, fine. So they got him on oxygen. You know, so while they're transporting him to the kangaroo care, I go back around the corner because everything is within a radius. It's not far. It's only like three miles away. So mm -hmm. I go back to pick my boys up. Like, come on, we're going to have to go to the hospital. The minute I arrive to Texas Children's Hospital, which is like no more than an hour and a half later, 
they've administered Mayani fentanyl. They got him hooked up to this machines. Yeah, they have him hooked oh up. Oh my to god! Yes, they have him hooked up to the machines. They have oh. him. Um, they're administering him a uh, medication for the heart, which is called Milrenal. He's in the ICU cardiac unit on the at Texas Children's Hospital, and you know, so of course they're coming in. They're bringing me doom and gloom. Me, I'm a person. I say what you receive from them people is what will manifest in your life. So they're coming in. They're telling me, oh, your son has congestive heart failure. This is severe. His heart is at 11 percent. And I'm like, OK, my son is healed and I'm not going to receive that because he's going to overcome this. And I have to be in the right state of mind as a mother to ensure that I'm watching what y'all do, that I'm not in a vulnerable state and that mm -hmm. I'm aware of what's happening in my surroundings, you know. And so uh, basically. Um, they have a list of medications. It's like they're just administering medications at first. You know what I'm saying? They're not even I don't even know what they're giving them. So I'm like, hey, I need a list of medications. What's going on? What are the procedures? What is happening here? And so uh, basically they have him on like almost 14 different medications. I mean, it's a medication for everything. I mean, it's just all kind of different supplements, all every, you know, just a lot of different stuff. Mm -hmm. And so uh, so about three days later. I leave and I come back, you know, I'm coming back to visit because I'm there every day. I'm like on a schedule. There's I didn't miss one day being with my auntie. Um, I would get there and I would, uh, you know, we would be there all day. I would put him to bed. And when he woke back up, we would be there again. It was my duty to ensure that he was never left alone, you know. And right. so basically, um, one day I come into the hospital and I hear a baby screaming. And I'm like, whose baby is this? And I walk in the room and this nurse has Mayani pinned down on his stomach and she's basically he's he's in he's he's naked he don't have on nothing but a diaper and I'm like what are you doing and she's right. like, oh I'm just trying to draw blood I'm like what do you mean you trying to draw blood so I touch Mayani he's freezing cold I look at the thermostat she's like oh I just gave him a bath because his sheets is wet you know his blankets because I have brought his own blankets and everything in and his blankets mm -hmm. are and I'm like, why is his blankets wet? Oh, he peed on them. But then come to find out she gave him a bath on him. But nonetheless, though, she ended up uh, basically, you know, his IV was ripped out of his arm. Like he had an IV in his hand and it was ripped out and he was just <gasps> crying and screaming. And I'm like, why are you, you know, what are you doing? So I, start, I filed a complaint with the... Uh, with the with the nurse manager the manager on the floor they all tried to play it down and then what the nurse did was retaliated against me because everything i'm doing i'm the i'm recording I'm, I'm 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 making sure i'm keeping document i'm posting it on my TikTok. everything that's happening i'm posting it so mm -hmm. i'm telling the story i'm actually on live in the hospital but i'm in there by myself but she's still working with you know she's still working and she's coming back and forth so all of a sudden one of the nurse manager by the name of grace comes in and she says to me Oh, you're on your phone recording. You can't record on your phone and da 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 da. So what the nurse did was she went and retaliated to try to because she knew what she did and she know that I had reported her right there. She retaliated. This is day three. She now wait, this is in this is in Texas. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Houston, okay. Okay. Houston, 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 Texas. Houston, Houston, Texas. Okay. We didn't left Missouri. We okay, and where where where's where's my auntie's um father at at the time? Girl. I plead uh, is, 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 okay. is any of his okay no is any of his family aware of what's, what's going on? on like where who's the I'm 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 getting that what who was supporting you as a mother at this point right. because you're losing it about your son like you you you're doing what you're supposed to do because mm -hmm. that's what you you know you're programmed and your heart mm -hmm. and your love for your children that's yeah. what you do but who is supporting you yeah. in the midst of all this chaos like yeah, I have friends, my mom, you know, okay. but, but because I'm the only one who lives in Texas, I mean, you know, I have family oh, yeah. in Texas, but we're kind of all scattered about. So everybody's okay. just kind of like on the phone, you know, if you need okay. anything, you okay. know, I'll come up there, you know, so I have friends and stuff like that. Right. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. And so, but basically in a nutshell, when it comes out to it, to carry in the weight, it's just me. Cause you know, that's okay. just emotional support, but physically, mm -hmm. spiritually, it's all me. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. And, and so, uh, you know, at that point I had told them, you know, uh, basically I don't want, um, you know, I told them, I'm like, no, I need to file a complaint on y'all all because you, she's retaliated against me because I put a complaint in on her. How does that work? You know? And, um, basically I ended up, uh, what ended up happening after that? So basically I ended up, uh, talking to the case manager 
and then um, they brush it under the rug. But I'm just keeping documentation of everything. I'm right. just keeping documentation. Mm -hmm. So different doctors are coming in and, you know, he has this and we, well, we think he has this. We think he has that. We think nobody is definite about anything. So I had summed it up by telling them, you know, after they did the fit and all things, don't give him any medications without my consent. And we need to get all of these medications dumbed down because y'all not about to have my baby on all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I also told them, I don't want none of y'all giving my baby no bath. Don't touch him. I'll do his baths. I'll do whatever needs to get done as far as, you know, as far as his his caretaking and his well-being. Y'all basically just here at this point because right. we don't really need you guys unless it's emergency. So as right. time progresses, um, Mayani is moved to uh, he's moved to the uh, the floor where it's kind of like where they basically say everybody on this floor has cardiomyopathy, you know. Mm. And so uh, they like, oh, he may need surgery uh, where we want to go in and we want to cut, you know, we want to cut his cut, cut through his underarm. And because what they had came up with is that, oh, you know, baby. Babies have a little tube on their heart. And when they're in the womb, it helps them to breathe because it's helping the oxygen flow throughout the system. And so what their analysis was, what their hypothesis was, was basically they believe that Mayani was uh, the fluid was circulating in his from the lung. The lung wasn't filtering because the heart, the EF, which is the erectile fraction. It, like the pump of it, it wasn't strong enough. So the water was going, the, was bringing fluid back through the tube, through the PDA. This mm -hmm. was the hypothesis. But also Mayani had rhinovirus too. So they gave him antibiotics and rhinovirus is simply a variation of RSV. Okay. Okay. And that would explain, okay. you know, the fevers, et cetera, you know, okay. the diarrhea as things of that right. nature. And so mm -hmm. as time progresses, Mayani is getting better mm -hmm. because I'm giving him sea moss. I'm giving him um, coriander tea. I'm You're doing giving more him, natural th remedies. Yeah, I'm doing more natural yeah. things. Yes, ma'am. I'm yeah. doing more natural things and I'm giving it to him daily. And I'm giving him the juices, the fresh pressed juices and everything. I'm leaving them there with the doctor. Like give him this in the morning before he eats, you know, telling them, you know, when I because I'm getting there at about 11. So I'm telling okay. him when he first wakes up, give him this, you know, and prior to this, Mayani had never had like because he was breastfed. So he had never had like uh, infamil formulas. Mm -hmm. And when it came down to his food, I would go to the store and purchase organic vegetables and fruits and I would blend them up myself. Yes. So he, was never, he had never even had Gerber. He had never even had packaged stuff. You know, right. what I mean? everything was all natural for him because this was my fourth kid. And, you know, mm -hmm. During the time that I had my first one to him, there was a lot of information that had came forward for us mothers that we yes. didn't know about. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, and then as with me breastfeeding, like I would drink certain herbs and I would drink certain things to ensure that he would get it into his system, you know, to help him out. So, mm -hmm. but because he was hooked up to all of these tubes and he hadn't ate for three days because of he being sick, he had lost a significant amount of weight. And so he has some malnourishment as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what I did was I began to research what kind of formulas I could give him because, you know, as they get older and, and I stopped to I stopped producing as much vitamin D as he needs. Right. So what I did was I got him a organic vitamin D supplement. And then okay. I found a I found an organic formula, which was called Kindermill. And then when it came to his foods, I got some organic foods and stuff that I had started to give him to help him, uh, you know, through his recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a central line placed in his leg, which would prevent them from keeping to have to poke him. And uh, when they came to get ready to take him to do the central line, the anesthesiologist came in and was basically like, OK, these are the risks. This is what's happening. This is what we finna do. Now, come over here and sign this. Come over here and sign this. Sign this doc. Come and sign this computer screen. The computer screen is white with a black box on it. And right. I said, well, where's the paperwork? Because, baby, I don't sign nothing without reading. OK, right. what you got me finna sign. But you need to go print it off. And, the, and from here <laughs> Okay, here, exactly. And from here moving forward, <laughs> any document y'all want me to sign, y'all need to print it off and bring Definitely. it to me at least two hours before it's time for anything to go down because you're not going to give me nothing in five minutes and think I'm about to say, oh, okay, you know? And it even yeah. went the same with the registrar. She came in and she gave me contracts turned to the back where the signature line was. And I'm like, well, hold oh. on. I said, how much time you got? Because I'm about to read all this. 
And in some of the documents I refused to sign as well. So they were trying to come in and say, OK, well, can you can you sign this? Well, people don't know when they go in these hospitals that you sign in any form of contract yeah. is voluntary. You yeah. don't know what the, you need to know what these terminologies mean. These these uh, documents they gave me talk about. I give them the right to be power of attorney that mm. I'm a subject and, oh. and that I'm doing this. See, because there's legal lease, there's legal terms and yeah. every, every institution and every structure has their own definition for certain Word. So, yeah, they might have told us in school through the Webster's Dictionary that this was the definition. But when you get to play involved with these governmental structures, they all got their own definition. Yeah. You right. know, so you're not about to be the power of attorney of anything over here. Okay. So basically, right. there were a lot of documents that I refused to sign. And so right. um, now I'm going to just go ahead and fast forward. Uh, how how old are you? How old are you? I'm 39 right now. Okay. Yeah. Now you are educating <laughs> I just want to I just want to give you your flowers girl yes. because you are really Thank getting you. down like I'm just yes. listening to you and yes. I'm like I'm, I'm, I'm 12 years older than you so okay. I'm just saying like I just applaud you for that I just had yes. to break in and let you know that that you continue to thank you for educating us Thank yes. you for being on this podcast and right. also just your community. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, girl, we wouldn't even, you know, because when we go to the doctor, you just go, oh, okay. Oh, right. yeah. Now yeah. You're, yeah. Mentally, you're mentally educating us on pay attention to what you're doing mm -hmm. on yeah. everything. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Continue. Yes, ma yes, ma <laughs> and then another thing too, when we're dealing with these hospitals, you know, they come in, see everything is by consent. So mm -hmm. basically when they're coming in and they say, oh, well, we want to do this and we want to do that. OK, well, if you want to administer my child any kind of medications, what are the side effects? If you want to do a procedure on my side, on my child, what are the long term recovery? What is going to happen? What are the pros and the cons of this? How many test studies do you have to show that this really works? Are you right now playing? You know, are you playing doctor? Because they don't do nothing but use a medical Google. Half of them right. come in there, and then when they come in right. there, do you have any questions? Yeah, you need to have some questions because what they come yes. in and doom, 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 you're gonna do this. Do you have any questions? You know, yeah, I got a question. What that word mean? What that mm -hmm. word mean? Right. <laughs> Can I see it? Definitely. Because you know, when they were telling me, oh, his heart has fluid and he has this, let me see it. Pull it up on the computer screen. I want to see this fluid. I want right. to see right. the images of his heart. I want to see the water in his lungs. Yeah, I want to know. And you know what? They they yeah. don't have anyone to challenge them. It's very rare that mm -hmm. someone. Gonna challenge them in, mm -hmm. in their the so yes, they they think you being rebellious now you yes uh defiant causing a problem yes ma'am yes ma'am Yes, yeah. they, 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 they do the uh, mm -hmm. the black woman is always the issue, you know, she's loud and she's angry and she's well, attitude. No, I just want to know, like, no, mm -hmm. you could be as timid as hell, and then there's still it's mm -hmm. always a pushback on that, like you said, about asking a question. So, yes, mm -hmm. I'm so glad that, yes. yeah. Oh, yes. I had questions all the time and I told them no about plenty of things. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we want to do this. No, you won't be doing that. So, oh, right. do, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so with fast forwarding, when, how did you end up in Minnesota? Okay. Right. So what happened was, so uh, I went to the hospital. So, I, I, okay. So here we are. Okay. Mayani was admit, admitted to Texas Children's Hospital on January 5th. On okay. January 25th, um, Basically, I was like, when my son going home? Because right. now he's better. He's we, right. they moved us down to the basic observation floor. They're not doing anything but coming in there giving medication. There's nothing right. going on. The room is smaller. You know, basically they like, okay, we don't care too much about y'all. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, you know, every once in a because they had they came basically it came up with, oh, we may have to do a procedure where we go in and close the PDA, right? So I'm like, okay, well, before y'all plan on doing anything, I need to know the side effects. I need to know how you want to do it. I need to know what you know, the same things that I just said to you. Right. And don't right. bring me nothing, no, don't bring me nothing no one minute beforehand. I need to know everything. I want to talk to the people what's going on. And I need right. to see the proof that this is what's actually happening with my son before you think you finna just be doing stuff. And so mm -hmm. basically it summed up to that. None of that was the problem. Cause I said, because it kept on, it kept on being prolonged. I'm like, okay, are they doing a procedure? What's going on with the procedure? Are you going to bring me the documents? What's happening with the documents? Who's supposed to be performing it? You know, what is going on? So they're basically like, so on this day, so here it comes. I'm like, it's time for my son to go home. 
because he's spinning around in cords. His heart rate is at a 47% at this time. Mm -hmm. he's, he's ready to go. So now when he's seeing us leave, y'all breaking his spirit. Y'all not going to yeah. keep separating me and my son. I'm tired of coming here. I'm tired of talking to y'all. I'm tired of repeating myself, all of this. And then mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that I put on the record that at one point in time, after I told them don't administer my son any medication, that central line that was in his leg, it had started to come out. The minute mm -hmm. I turned my back to leave that night, they come in and give him morphine. Wow. And I'm like, did not. So when I come in the next morning, one of the nurses is like, oh, I'm sorry. It looked like they gave him morphine because this, his central line was coming out. I said, didn't I tell y'all don't give my son nothing? Uh, right. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. So, the, so the nurses weren't even like, um, you know, connecting with each other to say mm -hmm. what your requests were. Oh, like, it's oh, like it's oh, not even writing down what you're saying. Like the mother doesn't want him to have or mm -hmm. she doesn't approve of. They they weren't connecting with each other. They, they were like, just doing yeah, what they wanted what to do. Want to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't care. Mm -hmm. to wow. Yeah, we just wow. want to do whatever we want to do. All right. And so I want y'all to know, too, that everything that was happening I had a notebook. Every time I would talk to a doctor, got their name, what we talked about, the time they came in the room, everything from the right. day one. Once they gave them that fentanyl, I said, oh, and that, and that nurse retaliated against me. I had a notebook with all of that in there. Right. So right. basically when so now it's time for us to go, because so a doctor by the name of Chris, uh, a doctor by the name of Priya Hari Taguntla, she's an Indian lady. She mm -hmm. comes in because they switching up doctors every time it's a different doctor, somebody different, different, different. She comes in. Oh, well, we want first thing she says to me, we want to give him immunizations. Nope, not doing that because I uh, Mayani was is immunization exempt. Right. Okay. So we uh, I, no, we're not doing that. Why don't you want to do it? What you need to know now, this is the code that I need everybody to look up when you win. If you went to the hospital right now or you you end up in a hospital, 42 CFR 482.13. That's patients, conditions of patients rights. OK, you have a right to privacy. So when you tell the doctor that you don't want to do something, you got a right to privacy. I don't got to break down and explain nothing to you. I said I don't want to do immunizations. And that's exactly what's going on right now. I don't need to talk to you about it. Oh, right. Right. You may have a weak immune system, girl. Bye. Right. You know what I'm saying? When right. are we going home? So now I'm at the point when are we going home? When are we going home? So right. they come up with, oh, well, we just want to keep him here and observe him. Can we do genetic testing? Can we do can we do this? And can we? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. We're not doing any of that. Well, I say, and then I'm telling them that the medications are giving him negative side effects. OK, this is what happened with the negative side effects. He had a thyroid issue. It began to give him hyperthyroid issue where it shot up his thyroid. So when the endocrinologist team comes in and they're telling me, oh, yeah, he may need a medication for the rest of his life. I said, are you? sure that because at this point he's on four medications they got him on four four diuretics right his skin right. is drying out excessively he's having mm -hmm. black stool which is dark deep you know Ooh. it's like tar you know how like the the first the meconium when the baby's first born he's mm -hmm. having stools like that his left leg has swelled up with edema and he has an excessive cough right so mm -hmm. when I look up the re and I do the research for the side effects of the medication, sure That's enough, every one of these. But when I asked the endocrinologist, was any of these side was was these symptoms from any side effects of the medication? She said, no, we looked at his medication and it said and it doesn't and it's not from that. So when I did my research, I called her. I said, so you told me that none of the medications were the reason for this thyroid, this hyperthyroid jump. <laughs> so, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. What are you I'm You're sorry. sorry and pumping him sick. Yeah. What? Yeah. I don't, oh God! I don't know. Yeah. How did you hold that together just to even sit Girl. in front of them to talk to them? Like, Girl. man. Yes. Yes. So Priya mm -hmm. Hari comes in, and you know she's basically trying to say they want to do genetic testing because we don't know what's wrong. We don't know. I said, well, I don't feel comfortable giving him these medications. Why does he need to be on four diuretics if it's drying right. out his skin and it's giving him negative side effects? Well, that it, those are our uh, those are our uh, uh, water retention therapy. That's our that's our water retention therapy. And and every time a doctor is coming in, I'm like, what you're doing is you're trying to use a generalized study that you have from whatever book you read. We are not the same. You a Caucasian. I'm melanated, baby. I'm from the earth. I'm, I'm made from the stars, honey. Whatever I need, I can get from the source. I don't need y'all. So you can go right. and take what you read in them books and you can shove it because I'm not accepting what you're right. telling me. 
Mm -hmm. right. So basically I tell her, no, we're ready to go home. Oh, well, okay. Well, okay. Uh, all right. Well, so now they, they, they don't know what to do. They so shuffle I, their feet. Mm -hmm, they shuffle in <laughs> their feet. So here it is. Girl, so basically I'm sitting in there and then one of the nurses comes in and she says, well, cause they trying to send me home with prescriptions. They say, well, the pharmacy was unable to fill your prescriptions. The doctors generally want you to have your medication before you leave. Big I pharma. Say, mm -hmm. But they want me to get the medication. They want me to get the medication in, in the hospital. Well, your mm. med your, your, his Medicaid isn't working now. My auntie has Down syndrome. So he, I had him, I, when he was first born, I did all the paperwork to get made, ensure that he would have insurance for the rest of his life, to yeah. ensure that everything that he needed. So his insurance should have never been cut off. Right. Never. And so yeah. basically I was like, so they were like, can you go down to the financial institute and get it done and speak with our financial counselor and do this? No, I'm not doing it. I'll do that when I get home because I know my son has insurance. You'll get right. paid. You'll get back paid or however this works, but I'm not doing that right now. I'm not leaving my son up here with y'all to go right. do this. My mind ain't even worried about that. I'll do it when I get ready. Basically, okay. you, you're not my authority. And so, mm -hmm. uh, so basically the next day, girl, I told them I, it was a Monday. So I said, I'm coming to get him Wednesday. I said, we leaving Wednesday. But girl. And what's that date? That's going to be the, the Wednesday would have been the 29th. Okay. The 29th okay. or the 30th. Okay. So that two, this was about a Monday. Girl, I woke up. Honey, some said, go get your baby now. Yeah. Girl, we hopped up that next day. This is the next day after because they had in their mind they was banking for Wednesday. They was ready yeah. because also with that central line, it was at you can only keep the central line in for about 10 days before it begins to it could bring infection if it's not being used. So at this point, Mayani is off of the Milrenone. He's no longer getting the intravenous drugs or anything. And so I told them, you need to go ahead and take that central line off. So it comes down to the last day. They like, oh no, uh the doctor said they want to keep it in. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, but you coming to take that central line out today and you better get somebody to do it here right now because i'm looking up because this was early in the morning when they said they was gonna take it out here comes seven o'clock ain't nobody came to take it out no come and get that up out my baby right now there's well we what if we need to, what if we need to draw labs i said whatever y'all need to do y'all better get it from that central line today because as of today y'all not getting no more blood y'all not running no more tests y'all not doing nothing with my son it's done so right. girl, i get up there girl we get that cart we go upstairs to get my yanni they here we, you know, they hear we there to get them. They, what, what's going on, Miss Johnson? Oh, uh, is everything okay? We just want to make sure that he's safe. We want to make sure that he has his medication. I'm on video, y'all. I got this on live because after we have this conversation and they're telling me that they are going to continue to give him these medications despite my concerns of the negative side effects, I told them, I want a second opinion. We're no longer using your services. I'm ready to go. So I serve them with my legal documentation, my power mm -hmm. of attorney. I serve them with, you know, my statute staple security instrument, telling them that if they violate my rights, they're going to pay me this much. I tell them, you need to make sure you get these documents to the legal team on camera. Right. So mm -hmm. here, here's Priya Hari. We just want to make sure he's safe. Christina Bishop, he has to get his medication here or he can't leave. Girl, please. So I tell them to give me an AMA form, which is against medical advice. They send the caseworker up by the name of Rhonda Howard. She comes in and tells me that if I fill out the AMA form, that she's going to call CPS on me. So now you are threatening to, you're, you are, you are trying to restrain me here under threat, duress, and coercion by telling me that you are possibly going to try to have my child kidnapped if I try to leave this hospital. This, wow. this, yeah. this yeah. So That's basically, it. yeah. So basically, um, once they found out that they were on camera, they ended up sending the police that because Texas Children has its own police. They end up sending the police up there to escort me out the building. Mm. Oh, my God. Me, it tells me I can't be on the premises. So I don't even get a chance. <laughs> I was going to take them my legal. I was going to take my legal documentation to the legal team. However, they refused to even have me on the property. That's cool. Yeah. That is. And your child is there? No, I took my baby with me. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good. So good. then you take him then. You was able to take him right then and there. Oh, good. No, no, no. They didn't take him right then and there. They didn't take him right then and there. And so uh I ended up leaving the hospital and I But they did take the they did take that um the uh say it again, the the uh medication. The line out of him. They did take yeah, that oh, out yeah, of him. They had, yeah, okay. that, that was the day okay. prior. That was the day prior. Yes, yeah, so okay. that was about the 27th. They took it out. Okay. 
Okay. So were you able to walk him out the hospital with you when they gave you that uh, don't, you know, trespassing? Yeah, yeah. They were on this. We want you to get the medication. So they ended up giving me like a three to five day prescription of the okay. medications. And um, basically, you know, they kept on talking about, well, if you're unable to pay because the medication was like four hundred and some dollars. And they, well, if you're unable to pay, then this I'm like, first of all, money's not the issue. So now what you're trying to do is you're trying to put me in the category of being in poverty and below income guidelines so that you can make it like I'm unable to provide for my child yeah. in a substantial manner. That's what. And I said, I told the, I said, girl, I got money over money over money how are you coming over here talking to me about prices the point is i don't want your medication and i don't have to take your medication that's right. the point that we're getting at and so um you know they were asking about genetic tests and i told them i didn't want to do that when they gave me a folder when i was leaving out the hospital girl why i opened up the folder and they didn't schedule me an appointment for genetic testing after i already told them i didn't want to do it oh wow what uh, yes yes no. exactly yes yes ma'am yes ma'am and so they had all of these appointments scheduled. We want you to go to your primary care. We want you to do this. Now they schedules all these appointments and they did you get your primary care appointment scheduled? I said, I'll do it when I get home. Y'all don't right. run me. You don't keep trying to tell me what to do. I'll go to the primary care when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. So basically right. we, when we leave the hospital, I'm reviewing the documents. They've also falsified the documents talking about my auntie was in pain at a stage four and all of this stuff. My son was not in pain. If he was in pain, it's because of anything that y'all inflicted on him. So when I called, I ended up filing grievances on them. Mm -hmm. Right. And I spoke with the leadership staff and um, basically I told them about what happened. And, um, you know, I let them know that my rights were violated. I sent them emails and I'll send you guys all of this. I sent them emails and I have it right here. Uh, basically, I let them know that, you know, your team is out of control and you need to do something about it because they will be held criminally and civilly liable, period. Yeah. And so here it is. Uh, five days later, this is now January. No, this is now February 6th. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, February 5th. This is February 5th. Okay. And uh, knock, knock, knock. You know, we're in the house. We're chilling. You know, like I said, they got these appointments scheduled back to back. But in my mind, I'm like, my baby needs to rest. He's been in this hospital with these machines going off. You know, every time you fall asleep in the hospital, they come in and they waking you up. They poking on them. They pricking on them. It's cold. You know, he's finally at home, comfortable. Right. And he's going to rest. We're get, we'll do these doctor's appointments when we do these doctor's appointments. Right now, we, we're resting. Everybody's tired. We didn't basically mm -hmm. live at the hospital. Yes. Girl, February 5th. Here comes CPS at my door, an agent by the name of Ebony Cobbins. Mm -hmm. She comes to the door. And I'm at this point, because I know I told you I hadn't been talking to him, but I'm already knowing like it's these doctors who didn't call, um, who didn't call CPS on me. Right. Mm -hmm. I go to the door. I'm like, can I help you? This is on camera. Yeah, we got a we got a report from a hospital from the doctor stating that you didn't pick up a prescription and you missed the doctor's appointment. Ah! What? And. and that's what I, said I said, Ann, do you have a warrant? Can we see the other children children? Because my auntie's in my arms. The baby that she's there for is in my arms. So she's asking about the other children. I said, You absolutely cannot. You got a warrant. You got a warrant. No. And I they don't. don't got nothing to do with nothing. Nothing right. to do with nothing. Exactly. So what you asking about my other kids for? Oh wow. And so when I ask her, do she have a warrant? She when I ask her, do she have a warrant? She says no. And I said, Okay, well. Bye. Basically, she said, well, because right. you don't want to talk to me, I have to give you uh, I'm going to go to uh, we have to go to our legal team. And I said, girl, do what you got to do. Get up out of my face because you don't have no merit right. here. And so what people need to know is that when CPS comes to your door, you do not have to answer. And two, if you do end up speaking to them, you have the right to remain silent. You can tell you can get what you do is you get all the information from them. And then mm -hmm. you you utilize that and say, OK, well, I'll speak to you when I get an attorney. And this is a bill in the state of attorney. this. Yeah, this is still in the state of Texas. Yes, ma'am. Houston, Texas. Okay. They at my apartment. They at my door. Okay. okay. And so, uh, so basically, uh, she leaves. So I'm like, oh no, see, they still harassing me. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh no, they got me messed up. We about to go. Come on, kids, let's get ready to go to the library so I can do this print off and get ready to put them on notice again. And so, right. uh, well, I'm I'm moving on to the next venture at this point. But you know, that's what I'm getting ready to do. So, girl. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I'm about to hop in the shower real quick. I hear boom, 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 boom. Oh. 
it's about seven constables at my door, six or seven constables at my door. Girl, they looking through my window because I had the shades off. Girl, I ain't got no clothes on. They looking through the window, beating on the door. She comes back. Ebony Cobbins. She comes back. Uh, we have an emergency order to we have a notice of removal to take Mayani. I said, take them for what? Because he doesn't right. have any because he doesn't have any medications. So girl, I go and get the medications here. These the medications that you're looking for, you know, the three to five day that they gave us. These medications you're looking for, here they are. Well, because you refuse to speak to me, uh, we're going to have to take him. I said, do you got a warrant? No, we don't have a warrant. Well, you ain't. Are you going to voluntarily give him to us? Her exact words. Are you going to voluntarily give him to us? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Not at all. Okay. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do this. So right while she's there, I serve her legal document. I give her my statute security, uh, my statute staple security instrument. Where basically he's like, if you if you violate my rights, this is what's going to happen to you. I gave her that. I served her right there on the spot on camera. Right. So um, I told them that they was trespassing and violating my rights, et cetera, et cetera. I didn't give them my yanni. So basically, in a nutshell, when they left, we left. I said, come on, boys, we about to go. We leave in the state of Texas, honey. I packed up my things because yeah. we were already in the process of moving. Girl, something told me to empty out the house. So I had put my stuff in storage about a week prior while my auntie was still in the hospital. I moved everything out of the house. So nothing was mm-hmm. there except our basic essentials until we move in our new place. And so mm-hmm. uh, when um, when uh, we left, we already had everything that we needed. So, honey, mm-hmm. we packed it up. I liquidated all of my accounts. I changed my license plate and we headed toward the state of Missouri. So we was in the state of Missouri for about three weeks, for about two and a half weeks or so, two and a half, three weeks. And um, then from there, uh, okay, so on February 7th, my friend messaged me like, girl, they got Amber Alerts out. (gasps) I said, oh, what? She sends me a screenshot. But the thing is, they have a they have a, a, a they have Amber Alerts out for a child by the name of Noah. My son's name is Mayani. Oh. When, when she came with the notice of removal, it clearly stated Mayani Jose Johnson. So the question is, who is Noah? Who is Noah? So they're calling my son Noah. He he's in need of immediate emergency care. The child needs his medication. He needs his medication. He needs his medication. Girl, they got me on every news station in the state of Texas. You hear me? ABC, CBS, everything. Looking for uh-huh. me and my son. Yes, yes. Talking about the mother took the child without or with against medical orders, and she refused, and, and and then tried to take my videos off of my TikTok because I had recorded every occurrence when they came right. to the door. They tried to take my videos off of TikTok and try to turn me around to be the villain. And not only that, I was doing a video about uh, doing natural herbs and and care for my auntie. They took right. that and talking about mother. The mother wants to use holistic care and girl, like like basically. Oh, like, wow. there's they have cultures that do holistic care that's the whole point about it the uh, the muslim community um arabic communities use holistic care so uh, even the amish they don't use the medicine yes right exactly exactly medicine is government medicine is government yeah, the FDA. The systems, child. The systems. The systems that we yeah. got to live by is h- horrific. Like, golly. Yeah. Yes. yes. So as we're on the go, um, you know, something says to me, girl, go to Minnesota because Kansas, you know, I'm in Kansas City and I'm like, OK, they they know I'm here because they're saying they, they saying that she could be in Kansas City with family because we on the news. They got us on the news every day. They got us on the news and they got us on the news next to this little white girl by the name of Aubrey. Aubrey came up missing during the time that we were on the where we were seeking asylum from these people who were hunting us down like slaves. This girl, this little girl was missing and in danger. And why they find this little girl dead? Because they steady looking for us. They made me and my auntie priority over this little girl and then want to talk about how. Uh, they don't know where they dropped the ball. A sheriff is trying to figure out how they miss Aubrey. You miss Aubrey because you was on a search for Mayani so bad. You was looking for Noah so bad. Whoever Noah is, I have no idea. But Noah, to me, was a cold word for them yeah. to know that this is fake. We 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 want him. This is not his child, but this is what we're going to do because we're going to take these medical records and we're going to put them all under this fictitious name. Mm-hmm. And so, uh. 
we ended up going to the state of Minnesota. By this time, we on CNN, we on the nationwide because wow. they got with they got with to us being in the state of Missouri. So once they found that we were in Missouri, they pledged it as nationwide. Oh, get this child. He's in need of medication. So we were in our Airbnb for about three days, for almost three days. And I needed to go to the truck and replenish. I needed to get, you know, get the things that we needed because, you know, the, I was packed. You know, we were taking things in light. So the kids, you know, we live in a basic regular life. I'm trying to keep everything normal. But at the same time, my kids are privy to exactly what's happening right now. My kids are well aware of they know the law. They know everything that they need to know, you know, as far as little kids go, the right to remain right. silent, et cetera. So one of my kids is crying about he wants bottled water. He don't want water out the faucet. And I'm like, OK, so Mayani went to sleep. And before before he when I before I put Mayani to sleep, I was holding him and I just started praying over him and mm -hmm. telling him like you you were you know like you were so protected you were so I love you you know because in my spirit I could feel I could feel it it was coming to a close mm -hmm. and plus I was getting tired you know what I'm saying I was getting tired because I looked out the window and I seen the police chasing a white truck that looked just like mine and I'm like nah. That couldn't be it. You know what I'm saying? How would they know I'm here? And so I get down, I go down to the, uh, I go down to the parking lot and I got a habit of when I hit my, when I'm away from my car, I'll hit my button and I walk uh -huh. past a truck that looked just like mine, which is a white Yukon Denali, but I walk past a white Chevy Tahoe uh -huh. and it's four white dudes in there. Oh, and I said, that's them because I'm dressing like a Muslim. You know what I'm saying? So you can't really. And that was another reason I went to uh, I went to Minnesota because it's a lot of Muslims there. I can wrap up and, and mix right in with them. Yep. OK, right. Right. So then on the news, they talking about they looking for a little boy. <laughs> they talking about they was looking for a little boy. I started dressing my auntie like a little girl. I put a little ball on his head. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got him a pink blanket. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, We're going to throw him all the way off. And right. so uh, they hop out the car on me. We're uh they they call me by the name of somebody else. And mm -hmm. I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, that ain't you know, no, mm -mm. so you know, I keep walking. They pull mm -hmm. their guns out on me. They say, Where are your kids? I said, Where are your motherfucking kids? Right. Don't worry about mine. Because I'm now I'm I'm in straight beast mode at this point. It's only protect my kids. Because I'm gonna tell right. you right now, I would have died for mine. We right. Right. would have really went down like that. I was willing to lay down my life for my kids. I'm not about to just give you my kids willingly and voluntarily. Y'all not going to mm -hmm. ring me through this system. I'm not y'all property. I'm not y'all slave. I don't okay. belong to y'all. And so basically, that's where I was when I'm on this run. Like, whatever got to go down, that's what it's going to go down to because I'm not giving y'all my baby. Period. Wow. And right. so uh, when um, they got me, like I said, the boys is still upstairs. Mayani is asleep. And so... Uh, you know, where's your son at? Does he have his medicine? And I'm just quiet. I'm not even talking to him. Don't talk to me. We we done. This is where we at now. This is where we are. So they like, do we have, can we go get the boy? You know, can you let us in? You know, whatever. Cause I know the jig is up. I ain't getting nowhere. You know what I'm saying? So when they get up there to my sons, they call downstairs and they say, your sons ain't talking to us. I, mm -hmm. They said, why aren't they telling us their name? I said, because they got the right to remain silent. Well, right. Can you tell them? Can you tell them to tell us their name? I'm silent too. Y'all can't. Y'all do the work. Y'all been chasing us now. Now it's time for y'all to do the work. We don't have nothing to say to y'all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they end up taking me to Hennepin County, and okay. um, where they're booking me in, they have me on an extradition. That's my charge. That's what my documentation says. It says extradition without a warrant because I heard one of the FBI agents say, "He said, do you have a warrant?" He said, "No." So basically, when you are arrested, they are supposed to have a Fourth Amendment warrant. These people didn't even have a warrant to arrest me. You know what I mean? They just basically kidnapped me. And, wow. and when I finally get to make my phone call, you know, I get to talk to my mom. And a couple of days later, you know, she's like, OK, well, she comes to they call my mom. They took my Yanni to the hospital in Minnesota to be examined. They declare him healthy and stable. Even when the news found him, they was like, oh, he was safe. The news even said this. 
when the FBI declared him healthy and stable, they called my mom. Even foster house, the foster care lady declared him healthy and stable. Wow. Okay, come up here and pick him up. I got videos of Mayani on February 28th. They took him on February 29th. Mayani is kicking it. He's in his little toy. He's bouncing. He's jumping. He's living his best life. I'm getting video footage of him the entire time right. to show that he was never what they claimed he was. Right. So my mom gets to the state of Minnesota to pick up the boys and Mayani's not there. They talking about, oh, well, Texas wanted Mayani. Okay, well, why? They wouldn't let her see him. They wouldn't let her anything. So where he went, I don't know. But listen, she gets my other two boys. So on uh -huh. March 4th, on March 4th, I get, they give me a document in jail, tell me they suing me. Texas CPS tells me they suing me for, for, for a child by the name of Noah. I'm like, what? And, this is the movie. This is like stuff that you see on a movie, and you are technically going through it. Suing yes, you for your own for child. your own child. biological child. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's called uh they body snatching children. Yeah, right. oh yeah, yeah, most definitely. And so during this time, I told you Mayani is gone. So Mayani went missing for a whole month. My mom didn't know where he was. Nobody knew where he was. They wouldn't give my mom any information, anything. When Mayani's whereabouts become known, they've performed surgery on Mayani. <gasps> yes, they perform mm -hmm. surgery. Yes. Without your permission or consent. What? Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. supposed to, the CPS is supposed to call your next to kin to come get your child. And yes, they should have been calling your mom. Yeah, he was supposed to go with my mom. From oh the my god but and your mom what city is your mom in my mom's from missouri i'm originally uh -huh. from kansas city so that's where my mom was right so, you know minnesota's about six hours out so right. came up there yep. with him. you know what i mean right. and so my auntie's missing so he comes back and he's they've done surgery on him and um you know i'm not getting any information uh, i have counsel i have hired counsel because an attorney they work for the bar which is the british accreditation registry that means their yeah. oath is to the bar and they are not they don't have no oath to you you guilty before you even walk through the door you are you are a thing they consider you dead and they all work together the public pretender the the the, the judge oh, yeah. they all work together they you know do. so i have counsel you all have a right to counsel the sixth amendment allows you counsel they do not have to be bar registered so I have counsel. My counsel goes in. He finally gets to make it to one. He makes it to the court date, which was on March 17th. They refuse to listen to him. Oh. They already on the Zoom. He He's in the state of Texas. So he goes to the CPS. He goes to the CPS, the juvenile, the 315th district court, juvenile court up here in Texas. And um, my mom said that before he even walked in, they were conspiring, talking about how they weren't going to listen to him. Because he's coming in speaking the constitutional. He's coming in on another superior law because legislation, statutes, codes, policies, mandates, that is not the law. That is the color of law. That means that they it's fiction. It's not real. The U.S. is a corporation and everything that they do works with commerce. So that means when you're going to court, they're not doing anything but charging you. That means that that's a charge tax. That means that they're taxing you and they're charging it to your estate. That's it. Mm -hmm. They want to control. They own you. And so he's going in on trust law. He's basically like this child is in a trust. How are you kidnapping a child who is owned by their mother, completely owned on the record? How do right. you have this child? We're not listening to you. We're refusing to hear you. So meanwhile, I'm just in jail. And they come oh. to me and they say, they come to me. I'll go to court on March 6th. And they say, well, uh, if they give me a they they want me to sign this extradition, an extradition document, which reads Camila Johnson, all caps name. The all caps name is the dead corporation. Anything you see with the all caps name is not you. That's the fictitious character that they created from your birth certificate. OK, so it all caps Camila Johnson did flee the state of Texas willingly knowing that her child needed medications and endangered the child. She hereby waives her rights to be to be extradited back to the state of Texas. I said, I ain't signing nothing. Furthermore, right. because you chase me down, you chase me down like you, uh, and she hereby, she hereby waives all of her rights. Oh, you want me to, so what rights you talking about? We got constitutional, we got civil, we got patient rights. Hell, we got, uh, we got all kind of rights. And you think yeah. I'm about to sign a document that say I waive all of my rights? I ain't no, signing I nothing. Mm-hmm. 
So I got it. So you want me to sign this extradition paper to be to, to give you permission to, to send me back to the state of Texas. And y'all just chase me down like y'all have full authority over me. But you're going to bring me here and ask me to sign something. I'm not signing nothing. Well, if you don't sign, we're going to get it. We're going to get the uh, uh, the, the governor to issue a rendition warrant. Tell Greg Abbott, I said, what's up? I'm not signing nothing. You think because you tell me the governor going to issue something that I'm supposed to be scared? I ain't scared right. of none of y'all. Y'all already then took my baby. Y'all already got me locked up in here. You trying to dangle my baby in my face so I can do whatever you want me to do. My child already then been taken. I'm not doing nothing. I'm not waving no rights. Mm -hmm. They keep bringing me back and forth to court because every time I'm going to court, I'm telling them that I'm the living flesh and blood woman here by reserving all of my rights. And I refuse to be basically I hereby reserve all of my rights ordained to me by God in the Constitution here now and forevermore so i'm basically every time i'm going to court i'm saying the same thing the same thing every time i go to court i got a different judge they asking me the same are you going to sign are you going to sign so well, how long day, were you in the county then for about a hundred this this so this is march of 2023 24 because right? now we're in 24 because it so started okay. in they ended up extraditing me. They issued the rendition okay. warrant. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. They finally ended and up then, issuing the rendition warrant. Mm -hmm. And when the okay. when when you when you when you were um going through um the system right when you were being when you were locked up, what get what? How did you get released? What 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 steps did you have to take to get released? So I ended up terminating the counsel that I had, mm -hmm. and I started pushing documents through the mail myself. Okay. I started sending documents through the mail myself. Amen. And so what happened was uh, when they came and finally did the extradition, when they finally came and got me, they 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 sent me, I was in this little box for about three days. They put me in an Amazon van and it was like this little dark box or whatever. And I went through the state of Kentucky, Illinois, uh, Mississippi. They dropped me off in, in Kentucky. They dropped me off at this holding facility in uh and and uh i was there for two days and then they came back and got me and finally took me to harris county texas okay. where i seen okay. the magistrate i seen the magistrate and they tried to issue an emergency protection order basically saying they didn't want me around miami they tried to still charge me 2500 because i was held on a hundred thousand dollar bond when i was in minnesota they had me on a hundred thousand dollar bond but i wasn't so wait, out they had you, they, when you were locked up here in minnesota you were in the county hennepin county jail Yes, ma'am. I was in Hennepin County. Okay. And so um, they never, they, you had to stay in the county all that time? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they, so they never like let you transfer to like a halfway house or nothing like that? Nah, they just had me in there and my family was looking for me and they was trying to find me. They didn't even have me in the system. They had me, they was like, we couldn't even find your name. We because they to, over, overcharged you. They, they It was... I th mm. Yeah, well, you, you, they, they owe you. They owe you a lot because you did time for no reason, technically. No reason. Because you had mm -hmm. told them from the gate that you didn't agree to the terms of no medication. There's not yeah. there. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, like Shade was saying, there's so many other cultures that practice the same thing. So I'm not mm -hmm. understanding what it's like they wasted all this money and time and like you said a child had died in the midst of them focusing on Mayani and 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 changing his name like are they still even saying like why are they calling him a total name that's not his name because they still in him they they stole yeah. him they want yeah, him under that's exactly place. It. they done mm -hmm. placed him probably placed him with a whole family that they want him to be with so they can do they put him with a nurse. They put him with a nurse who works at the hospital. See, That's so yeah. they can do whatever they want and just use his cells for any kind of cure, whatever is going on. Right. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. That's exactly. I said it's something special about my baby because it's been since the beginning since he was Girl, born. I'm so mad because he had to be in a NICU. Mm -hmm. and, wow. Um, so when so the reason that I had to sit was because I refused to sign the document. That's why they kept making me sit. See, people hurry up and sign those contracts with them because they don't want to sit. You know, they like, oh, well, I'm ready to go. I'm just ready to get this over with. Nah, let's dance. You want to do right. it? Let's dance. It's, that's what right. I tell my people who, who I teach about sovereignty. You know, you can push all the paperwork you want to. 
But when you are you going are you willing to stand in the face of adversity when they come to you? Most are you are. willing to stand your ground and, and push your principles about who you are to 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 to, to stand your position? Are you willing to do that? Right. If you ain't willing to do that, then don't come over here playing around because it's right. a big system and they don't like when you work like that. They want you to be compliant. They want you to give them consent. So right. when you don't, it, it frazzles them because they are so used to people just, okay, yes, they used to yes men. So when you get people like me, it throws them off their script. They actors. Mm -hmm. You in the court, they right. acting. Law and order. Same thing is in the courtroom. It's all a game. So mm -hmm. when you throw them off their script, they like, oh, shoot. Because, see, they thought that they was going to be extraditing me immediately and have me signing documents. And to this day, I ain't signed nothing. And to this day, I haven't uh, signed any documentation. Okay. And so uh, when I started so, pushing that paperwork. Mm -hmm. no, no, go ahead. Finish that part. When I, when I started pushing that paperwork from jail myself, that's when mm -hmm. stuff started happening. That's when the yeah. attorney, they assigned me an attorney. They appointed me an attorney through CPS that I never hired. I had my own counsel. So when I finally get to talk to her, it's already been two hearings that they've had without me. They're claiming that they couldn't bring me in via Zoom. However, when she gets on the phone with me, she's talking about, oh, I couldn't contact you. I tried to find you. I said, well, how you find me now? I said, furthermore, who hired you? I didn't give you consent. Give me the contract that we have together. And also a document that I sent to CPS court while I was locked up. I told them in order for somebody to sue you, there has to have been equal consideration by both parties. Parties. That means if you go and buy a car, you give them the money, they give you the car. Both parties have entered into an equal consideration contract. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So where is the it, where is the contract that I have with you? What did you give me to give me equal consideration to tell me that you can sue me for my flesh and blood son? What are you right. talking about? Right. So they never, so they they was they was ignoring all of my documentation and everything. So this is when she ends up getting on the phone. After I get off the phone. I terminated her. I sent in the documents, told her that anything, any doc, anything that you thought we had going on is canceled. So basically, it's time they oh, we can get you on the phone. We can get you on the phone into court. Now they want me on the phone in court. So we I finally get to get on the phone. This is the third hearing because the first two hearings are basically like the first one is to say they bring up the what's what what you didn't give your son medications, he was in a da 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 where you get to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. And the second one is where they determine what they're gonna do. So off the rip by them not allowing me to go to court, they denied my due process. That's a violation of my fourth amendment because we all have a right to due process, we all have a right to face our accusers, and yes. then you want to bring me on the phone. So now we in what is called a basically it was like a status hearing. And basically to say what they've done. So they've issued a care plan and they've done all of this stuff. I'm like, wait a minute. How you where? Huh? Where was my son for a month? You know what I'm saying? Who gave you the right to take my child? Like, what are you talking about? So they are basically trying to shuffle me through the system without without, you know, without me having no recourse or no remedy or whatsoever. And so when we get on the phone. You know, I say my flesh and blood woman here by reserving all of my rights. But how are you going to bring me in court on the phone? Quit playing. And this is administration. This is civil. This is an equity court. How are you? OK, I don't want to go too far. Okay. But nonetheless, though, <laughs> she puts me on the stand. I guess it's time for me to testify. OK, mm -hmm. when she puts me on the phone to testify or whatever, I ends up cross-examining her. By the time we got off the phone, she judge, I want to withdraw from the case. I already terminated you. Why are you playing with me? So y'all already playing. Y'all already know what's going on. So by the time, so what happens is I finally get to, she's terminated. She's supposed to be terminated, right? Mm -hmm. I finally get to the state of uh, Texas. Okay. So the first day I see the magistrate. The next day I, I'm in for my arraignment. Now I told you I pushed that paperwork through the mail. Basically was a motion to dismiss. When I walk in, they send me a, a public pretender. She comes in, what happened? Da, 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 da. She asking what happened. You know, I tell her what happened. She like, what do you want? I'm like, man, I'm ready to go because I, I'm ready. To, it's time for the next phase of this journey. I'm done being locked up. It's time for the next phase. Girl, I prayed a prayer, girl, that I know the, that the heavens felt, okay? When right. I was up in here because Minnes Hennepin County was summer camp. Harris County, oh, nah, I can't be here. No, 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 no. Get me up out of this joint, okay? That's real right. jail right there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, girl, I walk in the courtroom, and the judge by the name of Warren Ty, he says, Miss Johnson, 
I want you to stop talking about the sovereign citizen stuff. Now, sovereign citizen is not what I teach because it's impossible for you to be sovereign and a citizen. It's not the same. So mm -hmm. he says, I want you to stop talking about it. I've seen people go to prison behind it and I'll throw you in prison. Oh. Yeah, that's what he tells me. Now, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do it your way or do you want to do it my way? That's what he said. Ooh. Yeah, that's what he said. So because I'm not a sovereign citizen and because I'm ready to go, I'm like, OK, he's like, so do you want to. So he, he 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 jumps over what he's saying and he's just like, OK, so you want to get so you want a PR bond, which is basically just a bond without no money. I'm like, mm hmm. Yep. So he like, OK, PR bond granted. And then the the attorney that got to me, I said, what about the emergency protection order? He said, emergency protection order removed. And then she was like, uh, what about the, because uh, they wanted me on a GPS tracking system, not mm -hmm. a house arrest, but a tracker to where they can see everywhere right. I go, everything Everybody that I do. Either. And I said, mm -hmm. what about the GPS tracker? GPS tracker denied, you know, like basically no, no GPS tracker, no emergency order, PR bond granted. So the, oh, so the, so the prosecutor says, uh, but judge, she was told that her child was at death. He said, I don't want to hear it. I know you're going to be mad. No emergency protection order. Get this woman out of here ASAP. Okay. Honey, they send me, they send me out because see what he wanted to do was like, I told you they're actors. He wanted to make it seem like what I did didn't hold no merit. If it didn't, you wouldn't have let me up out of here. You would have right. held me up in here mm -hmm. and you wouldn't have That's did none of what I asked you to. You granted me right. everything that I asked for. Yeah. Right. Well, so the I thing about it was that they, that they put you on a nationwide, <laughs> they made a mistake when they did that. And so with you being nation, you know, CNN and everything, you know, so much attention on you that caused then other agencies and other attorneys to pay attention to the case closely for what they're doing. They've done this to somebody already, a couple, a lot of people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so they tried, they did that, had to release you. So no more attention attention wouldn't be on it for other cases you know it's always a reason why they mm -hmm. you know release us from custody mm -hmm. um they give us money on civil cases you know all of that so it's mm -hmm. always a reason behind that we're gonna stop right here mm -hmm. and um we want you to let everybody know where they can find you on tiktok and we're coming in on another interview with you because there's so yeah. much to yes, register yes. at the time yes, and we don't want to yes. lose anybody yes, and we yes. want them to pay attention to what you're educating them on and what you're yes. currently going through because your son yes. still isn't in your custody correct right. yes ma'am okay That's so let everybody know where to find you um the pay uh my original page is supreme aboriginal um it would be under uh you could also find it under sovereign supremacist and then the page that we have that is advocating for Mayani, where you can get all of the updates, all of the everything in real time is uh, his name is Mayani and Mayani is M-I apostrophe A-A-N-I. And um, so that's basically where we are right now. And okay. I'm just, uh, yeah. So, yeah, not to yeah. move too fast. But well, just we, thank, yeah. we thank you so much for your story. Right. Um, we want to encourage you and uplift you um, yeah. with what you're going through as a mother, like we, you know, talked about before. Yeah, yeah. Um, we will be doing another interview. It's probably going to be in about 30 days, you guys, um, where she can give the other part of what she's you know, mm -hmm. going through moving forward, right? Yes, uh, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Meet the Shoe. Thank you. And please make sure that you check out our sponsors, Cashmere Lux, Boss Up Beauty, and Lena Beans Organic. Thank you. See you Friday. Mm -hmm.